This is the man the FDP is now pinning its hopes on, Philip Roslav. The 38-year-old has been health minister in Chancellor Merkel's cabinet since 2009. Now he's set to become the FDP's new leader. I would like to stress that this declaration of my candidacy can only be a first step to the renewal of the FDP in terms of personnel and policies. Further steps are needed and they will follow in the next few days and weeks. Back on September 27, 2009, no one would have predicted this twist in the FDP's fortunes. As its leader, Guido Westerwelle secured the party unprecedented popularity, propelling it into a position of coalition partner after 11 years in opposition. Westerwelle gained a reputation as a plain speaker and a politician skilled at marketing his party and wooing voters with promises, such as tax cuts. But other traditional aspects of the party's agenda fell by the wayside, and observers say the FDP's mistake was to become a single-issue party. Liberalism is the cornerstone of all the parties. Even the left party has its share of liberal thinkers, so the FDP doesn't have a monopoly on the liberal ideology in the way they used to claim. Philip Rosler has been variously described as nice, friendly, and harmless. He's drawn little attention to himself, dealing in the past two years with the notoriously difficult health portfolio. And to many, that was proof of talent. Rosler likes to portray himself as a man with a life beyond politics. But in fact, his meteoric career suggests he's always had his eye on the ball. As designated party leader, he aims to boost the party's credibility. Credibility means that we will concentrate on our liberal compass, which points towards the FDP's economic competence as a party that stands for the free market economy, civil liberties, and social liberalization. A kinder FDP, then. That seems to be Ursula's objective. One of his first tasks will be to restore order within the party, currently in turmoil following regional election defeats. Rösler is well aware that the party needs to take its problems out of the public eye. But there is already public debate about where the party's headed. At the next party convention and within the faction, we need to decide unanimously on our agenda. Is it a matter of opinion, an ongoing evolution, or a new direction? We're going to have to take a serious look at our basic approach to policy and personnel. Today we've only taken a first step. I don't believe a major change in direction is an option. I feel that at most we can simply make a few adjustments. For the time being, the FDP is too busy getting its own house in order to be doing much governing. Its navel-gazing seems increasingly desperate. Let there be no mistake, the FDP has political priorities which we aim to implement during the current term with support from 93 members of parliament. The new leader will have his work cut out for him, taking on the old guard who are digging in their heels. The FDP's parliamentary group leader is staying put, and so is the economics minister. Guido Westerwelle is the only one stepping down. To many, the party is failing to address the roots of the problem. Rosler is doing his best to put a positive spin on the party he's inheriting. A strong team requires a good mix of young politicians and experienced ones. This is the sort of team that will allow us to fight for credibility and for the FDP. The public now sees Philip Rösler as the voice of the FDP. The FDP itself sees him as the voice of hope. <laughs>